to West Philadelphia, born and raised. Well, that's how it goes. That's a that's a glimpse into who we're talking about. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, we're back on the Mizell show and <laughs> I don't know if you want to tune in or not, but we, we're hitting some good topics, some good nuggets, <laughs> some good information. Maybe Alana will get herself together. Um, here's the Mizell show. <laughs> Welcome to the Mizell Show. An inspiration for a new generation. Hi, I'm Alana Mizell, a loving mother of two, a devoted wife to Stephen, and an entrepreneur helping women realize their dreams and potential. And I'm Stephen Mizell, caring father of two, a devoted husband to Alana, and a driving force to help young men prepare for life after college football. And if that wasn't enough, we're a biracial couple. She was raised in the North, but I was raised in the South. The only thing normal about our lives. Who am I kidding? It's never normal around here. Join us for The Mizell Show. Right now. Yo, we are back on The Mizell Show. Alana. Oh, so sorry. Really? I was serenading you. Serenading me on the podcast. Yeah. What up, Alana Marie? Hey. How's it going? It's, you know. It's going. So there's a day and it's moving along. The day is moving along. (laughs) We are back on the Mizell Show. The Mizell Show. The Mizell Show. Which we talk about a a wide variety of things, but something that kind of stuck out to me and Alana that got a lot of like national and just so much attention so much so much attention was will smith smacking chris rock yeah so first of all we didn't even watch was it the oscar yeah we didn't those oscars we didn't we didn't see it live we didn't see it happen live we didn't see it happen live and so we woke up the next morning and text messages and just social media and everything was just blowing up and you have a group message that they were talking about i had a group message that they were talking about it and I don't know. Immediately, the fir- my first reaction was, "Who cares?" That was your reaction. It didn't do anything for me. Like it really didn't. Mine was, I didn't really know what was said. So my first reaction was, "Uh oh, what did Chris Rock do?" Because, I mean, like I'm not a super huge Will Smith fan, but I feel like, of the two. I feel like Chris Rock has put himself into some compromised scenarios more so than Will Smith. Yeah, I agree with that, and I and I think that the whole I mean, so when I when I heard about it, I I found myself I watched the clip. I'm like, okay, here's the clip, and then like the next day, everybody and their mom was like the who's who, and like going in on Will Smith or going. Everybody in had on an Chris opinion. Rock. Everybody had an opinion, and. My biggest thing was, is it really that important? (laughs) What's funny is that every time we say opinion, um, it reminds me of the salt and pepper song. When they say opinions are like, beep. Beep, yes. Holes. Everybody's got one. Yeah, and and I I feel that. And isn't that the truth, though? It's the truth. Like in that scenario? It's it's the total truth. Um, And I had another friend, I think on LinkedIn or something, commented, while we are out here watching the dog and pony show of Will Smith and Chris Rock, meanwhile, the feds are raising interest rates and something else happened. Like she was like way right. more po- political like than the I reality. was. The reality. And it made I me- mean, not even to mention Ukraine and Russia. Yeah. Ukraine and Russia that now. And we're so, con- it's like, it's run its cycle. It's new cycle. Even though people over there are. It's still, literally- the war is still going on. Right. It's still happening. And they're still evacuating Ukraine and. You know, people are still dying, but as Americans, we were so consumed with the fact that Will Smith smacked Chris Rock. Yes, and I think the thing about it is, like, people spent so much time on this and why did he do it and let's dig deeper and how is Chris Rock emotionally feeling? Like, these people, smacking A, smacking B, whoever you want to call it, are in the top 1% of the world. Like, they have money that people would never right. phantom or even imagine and you're sitting there arguing or you're talking time away about it and it's just like Yeah. There's but, so much more. Yeah, I think it's also just this 
It's so hard because I think there's this fine line between being able to be a comedian and then also leading the charge on like how you handle those situations on both sides of the story. Yeah. And let's get real. Chris Rock didn't write that joke. More more than likely, the script that had happened was not Chris Rock who wrote that. Yeah. Like somebody in there correlating to the Oscars, nobody said, I don't think that's a good idea because Jada Pinkett Smith has alopecia. Yeah. Like, no. like there's a whole lot more swords that needed to fall that had nothing to do with Will Smith and Chris Rock. Yeah, and, and, and that has to do with the actual production. But the people that end up having to that get talked about and get their image changed and what gets brought up more is Will Smith and Chris Rock the and Oscars. Jada Pinkett Smith and how she feels in, in between it all. And yet, but it's also the facet of like we we've talked about the Mazel show like often and a lot. It's like social media and media in general via the phone, the computers that you're so inundated. You feel like you're, you have to like get sucked into like, you need to be talking Mm -hmm. about it and you need to scroll and you need to get the clicks of it. And it's just at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm a conspiracy person, but like, like you said, people knew this was coming. The Oscars hasn't been relevant since COVID. And now all of a sudden, well, okay. I don't know that it hasn't been relevant. There hasn't been a scandal at the Oscars. But if Chris, to, if Chris to, Rock did I'm, not... I'm not saying that... To say that the Oscars hasn't been relevant is, like... It's a pretty big stab. Now, as heightened as it was because of the slap... I, I get where you're going with it, but, like... To say it's not relevant is pretty... That's pretty significant. I think it's not relevant. Think about the real estate point. But, like, I have am, you ever cared about the Oscars? But here's the thing, though. In my group message is African American males between the age. I'm not of, disagreeing that it also it opened the door to some more that people. That it opened the door okay, to more okay, people. Okay, got it. Okay. But that didn't change. Like those people didn't then go look and see who won what Oscars. I mean, they now cared about the Oscars, and they they cared, cared about, about it. a scenario <laughs> at the Oscars. Yeah, I, get, I mean, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. That's like that's like when there's say some brawl at an NBA game. And girls happen to talk about it. That's not going to make them then go watch the NBA. Well, it might. More than <laughs> more than likely, it won't unless it's on Real Housewives. Yeah, no, like I, I, you I, got your group of guys isn't going to all of a sudden have like everybody watching the Oscars next year. No, but no, they're just going to wait till the next morning and see if somebody slaps somebody again. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's I see what you're saying, and it's also about. I think more than ever now, it's all about being in a current news cycle. Like you want to generate and you want to be relevant right. for the for that cycle. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that it didn't bring some more awareness to the Oscars and that other people didn't then go look up other winners and stuff. Yeah. But I don't think it drove up like sponsorships or any sort of monetary value. I don't know. Who would have gotten the more monetary value in that scenario? Well, Chris Rock did. His, 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 so he's on a com, com, comedic tour. His tickets average price for $75. After the smack, they jumped to $750 per ticket. Shame on him. I'm not saying shame on him. It was the fact that I'm people, saying shame on him and whoever wrote that script because it was at the expense of a woman who has lost her hair. Well, I get that, but I'm just saying the fact of like things. And like coming off a Women in History Month and it actually happened in Women's History Month. And off of a episode where we talked about women's history. Oh, well, I mean, I, 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 I all I'm saying. saying is, at the end of the day, what ended up, who ended up winning, is still a male, at the oh. expense of a female. Hey, that's that's well, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Shame on Chris Rock then. Shame on whoever wrote the script, Chris Rock. No, I, I agree with that, and so it also makes me think. I hope that she's getting a cut of those ticket prices. How would she get a cut of Chris? I'm Rock? just saying, like, she could, it's man, somebody who think about it. You're, it's a Hollywood starlet mm-hmm. who now has to go around with a bald head, and she's chosen to not wear wigs because she's trying to be stronger in her fight. But you, you can't look at her, and it was a very simple joke. It was a very simple joke, and she was brought to tears. 
Yeah. And rolled her eyes. Like, there's so much pain behind that. And there's so much, especially in Hollywood, and we've talked about body image issues and imagery and things like that. You're talking about a black woman that doesn't have hair. Yeah. And another black African-American male that made the joke. Like, it's... Right. Yeah. Like... Yeah. Well, if if you was white, it would be a whole nother ball game. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Like, yeah. thank goodness it was a black yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, that that's true. It. But it's also a black man that's now reaping the benefits of her pain. Yeah. And yeah, he's re- he's, he's reaping the benefits of her pain and reaping the benefits of the skin. And like their family dynamic also. Yeah. You have to think that Will is taking a massive hit. So now their whole marriage is suffering. Yep. To some extent. True. I mean, I, 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 I agree with that. It's one of those things and where... And he's getting a paycheck. Yeah, Chris is getting a paycheck. And I'm, yeah. And again, like, I don't I don't follow the story enough to know what no, other know. ramifications could be coming from that. No, I, I know. It's just, I think as a society... I mean, we've even talked about this a long time ago with, like, football. So, you have your favorite SEC team. And yeah. the whole season, they're not playing well. And you're just hoping that the coach gets fired. Well, it's not just the coach. It's the other, you know, 10 that are on the field. It's all their families. It's all the support staff that could then get fired. You're talking about hundreds of people having to uproot their lives. And not realizing it, you're cheering on torn families. And ulti- to- yeah. ultimately, that's what's happening. Yeah, definitely. Is you're picking a side of the two and cheering on a torn family. Did you know that I sell makeup? Not only do I sell makeup, but the makeup that I sell is 3D makeup, which allows you to highlight and contour your face in a super simple compact. As a mom, I could not survive without my simplified routine. Not only that, but it's exactly what you need exactly when you need it all in one spot go ahead and check out alana mizell on instagram or alana mizell.com to learn more i just don't think that we kind of process through the ramifications of just that they're real people yeah and they're real people and it's one of those things where you know, we try to stay current on the Mizell show. Like this past, like two days ago, um, Dwayne Haskins, 24-year-old quarterback for the Washington Redskins, well, former Washington Redskins quarterback, was a number one, number first round draft pick, like highly recruited, um, highly talented quarterback. Had out, of th- col- out, of out of college. Out of college, yeah. Terrible, not good three years in Washington. Like he didn't live up to the build. He goes. To the didn't still, live up to the. What's that mean? He, so he he was a bust. People said he was terrible. People would. He oh, wasn't. So he was a first round draft pick and then didn't amount to anything. Exactly. Wasn't okay. amount to anything. But he got traded. Uh, he got cut and he got traded to the Steelers. And he went to an organization that I really feel was going to help him. Like Mike Tomlin, okay. great head coach. Got hit by a car and killed. He got hit by a car. He got hit by a car. What do you mean he got hit by? A, was he in the car? He was. I think he was walking. I don't know the details. He was in Miami. Like, I guess. So, a lot of players go to Miami and train in the office. He was down there training with other quarterbacks for the Steelers, wide receivers, yeah. and he got yeah. hit by a car and, it's warm. and killed. And people are talking about not just his life. They're saying, oh, he had a terrible so and so time at Washington. He was a bust. I'm like, this guy just died, and we are so desensitized. And we're so busy. Yes. Seeing him as just a sports fanatic. Yeah. And not realizing it's a human being. It's a family. Like he he's he's married and his his, his mom just lost her son. Oh my god. And it's like when did we become so desensitized that these That the first are people. comment that we're talking about is that he wasn't a good football player. Yes. And like it was it was so disheartening because of course, you know, we talk about my, my group mess. We were just talking through like how life is so short, but yet so many people capitalize on tragedy or capitalize on um, drama. And it's just like... They have- but, <laughs> but what you're saying is so interesting because that's how we've been conditioned to actually, literally, we have been brainwashed by social media companies from somebody who does content creation for a living. That's ironic. 
But what is the name of the movie that we were watching? Oh, um, the movie on Netflix. I'm sure people have social, s- social something. Uh, let me okay, look it Simon's up. Okay, gonna look it up. I'm so look it up. Yeah. I'll just kind of say the premise: the algorithms that have been created are created in such a way to literally brainwash you. The movie is all about ethics, and it came out a long time ago. It's about social media ethics and essentially how it's so messed up and how the developers of these things ended up leaving these big name companies, Facebook, Google, blah, 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 because they were legitimately using this psychoanalytical and like how the brain is developed tools to brainwash us. And on Facebook, you are more likely to see a negative comment than you are to see a positive comment. And that's because that's how the algorithm is set up because negative comments keep you on the platform longer. The social dilemma. The social dilemma. So negative comments keep you on the social media platform longer or on the article longer or wherever longer. Keeps your eyes glued to the screen longer. So of course, we are... Either whether it was that way or not, yeah. I'm guessing that because over the last what ten years we've gotten more and more conditioned mm-hmm. to see negative feedback, that our f- instinctional response is negative. Yeah. So like it's the same philosophy that you are the five people that you hang out with. Yeah. Right. True. So if the five people you actually hang out with are all five negative people that are on Facebook, that are on Instagram, that are that's what actually is inundating your life, then that's going to be your automatic response. But like if your automatic response is a conditioned response that is in a positive light, i.e. a grateful journal. So we do grateful journals at night uh, based off of a book called The Happiness Advantage. If you condition your life towards the happiness advantage then your response is more likely to be happy versus negative. Yeah. And then it also gives you the mental cap- capability to step away from those scenarios, situations in which the social media companies, as we know, drive you to keep you inundated, to keep looking at it. Right. And to keep you sucked in. And it just it's, 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 it's scary because you're becoming so desensitized to everything because you're there's so much access to it. And you think... It's by chance that these feeds yeah. are coming up or these posts are coming up, but it's no, it's like they're feeding but I, you. But I think desensitized is too light of a word. Mm. Because coming desensitized, you can come desensitized to a car that drives by. You can become desensitized to wearing a uniform every day if that's what you're used to. You can become desensitized to, I don't know, a picture on your wall that you've hung for two years. Yeah. Like you don't really see it anymore, you just walk by it. But the reality is, it's not a desensitization because you are being sensitized. You are being brainwashed because you're still staying on it. If you were being desensitized by Facebook and Instagram, then you wouldn't even get on it anymore. Yeah. You're addicted to it. Yeah. It's it's literally a neurotransmitted response is what it talks about in that movie. Yeah. And how it's literally... Causing serotonin to be released to make you feel happier or the opposite. Or you're comparing your life to somebody's negative response. Mm -hmm. So people may have looked at Will Smith and Chris Rock and like, oh my gosh, how could he ever do that? But then they didn't actually think about, Emmanuel Ocho actually talked about how Will Smith in his book literally talks about how he didn't stand up for his mom that was beaten. And how that's always been a problem of his. Yeah. So Emmanuel Oates kind of expanded on that and he posted about it on his Instagram. And it's funny because I am currently reading Will Smith's book and yeah. that's one of the biggest trigger points in that he his talks book. About. Yeah. It, when he talks about not standing up for his mom and his mom and his dad. Will Smith's dad were in a, an abusive relationship yeah. and he never stood up for it. So you have to think one, he just released that book, like just released it. Yeah. He also has read it probably a million times before releasing it because you go through editing and things like that. Yeah. Then he read it on Audible. Yes, he then did Then he's read. lived with his wife who currently has alopecia and just chose to come out about her, her autoimmune disease. Yeah. So for people that don't know what alopecia is, it means that you no longer grow hair. Yeah. To the point that she literally is bald. Mm-hmm. Literally is bald. So... The frame of reference has nothing to do with the anger that Will Smith has. It's that it was a gigantic trigger point. But all we see is the negativity of another man hitting another man. Mm -hmm. And like you just don't think, well, 
what if your largest trigger point was on display Stop. and on stage for everybody? Yes. What would your response be? Yeah. But like <laughs> both of us didn't, well, you know, neither of us really responded with, oh my gosh, how could he? Yeah. You know, and I think that that's large in large part because we've removed ourselves or attempted to remove ourselves from the brainwashing that is happening on social networks. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that we don't get on our social medias because we do, mm-hmm. but we've even gone as far as to mute or unfollow people that aren't adding that positive value to us. Yeah. You, Which you, you, Instagram you, hates me now. Oh yeah. Instagram Literally has no hates. idea what your it, it algorithm is doing it now because you're, like, you're, what in who the world? are you? Yes. I haven't posted and literally haven't posted on my feed in almost two months. Valentine's Day was the first one, was the last one. Oh, on the last one. My boo. I hope so. But with intentionality. Yeah. Because I've been so brainwashed. And it also says a lot for us to both be able to talk about this and, and, and see this from a different light because I don't know, I don't know if I saw this whole Oscar thing and all this two years ago, how deep I probably would have got on and had a whole like discussion about it and dug down and spent so much time on it. You mean like responded to people? Yeah, responded to people, making a big deal. Oh yeah, probably would have. I I think so because we, I were so inundated to focus on that and not focus on what's going on eternally. Not focusing mm. on what's going on with mm. me and the journey of the job and the journey of our family. Yeah. And it, it, it caused a lot of heartbreak for us. And for us. So, question. on the, Kind of on that topic. So, you were talking about kind of like how... So, really, a part of an addiction is numbing mm. and creating a wall against what's internally going on. Yeah. Right? And you rarely do people realize it happens. And those that are already have addiction in their families are more susceptible to become addicted to social platforms. And then on top of that, y'all, the earlier they can get kids, the more addicted they're going to become. Yeah. That's how that goes. Mm -hmm. So my question is, did, was there anything about what Will Smith's reaction that, kind of triggered something in you or made you say, I can see why he did that because in this scenario, I feel like it was the same. Um, I feel like you could relate, I guess is where I'm coming. I think I could relate from a standpoint that if anything, like you like you just said a few minutes ago, Imagine your biggest trigger being put on a stage and yeah. made and made fun of. Okay, so what would be one of your biggest triggers? Um, I would think one of my biggest triggers would be when it comes to me, because that's ultimately what happened. When it comes to you. So the other thing, this is I, kind of this is yeah. sort of kind of off topic, but I think this is important to mention that men were created to protect. Yeah. Literally, if you go back to Genesis, they were made they were made to protect. Yes. And Protecting is respect from a male form. That's why there is so much uh, masculinity correlating to wage increases and Mm -hmm. being able to provide for the family. And that's kind of how our society has created the patriarchy versus matriarchy is actually God-given but human exposed, Mm -hmm. ultimately. Yeah. But, like, it's not by chance that men get paid more than women for the same job. It's because it was designed so that men were actually providing more for the family. Anyway, so I think that that's important when you're also looking at Will Smith. Like, it's in male instinct Mm -hmm. to protect their family. So, that being said. I think the biggest, probably the biggest trigger would be for me was those, I would say those two years working in college football and not being able to truly provide the life that my family needed because okay. because I was chasing something or doing something in hopes of one day being able to compensate for it. I.e. if if I am sitting in the crowd and Alana is sitting next to me and someone says a joke about, oh, you're trying to do this but you can't even provide for your family because you're only making this, then I would probably get right. up and, and, and... So that's a clap at you, not at me. 
No, but if it's, which I think I think if somebody were to clap at me, and you were sitting there, I think you could hold yourself down. If somebody clapped at you, and you being able to vi- provide for us, or you chasing something, because I don't, I think men, men coming at another male, is one thing, and you have to think of the integrity of Will Smith though. Yeah. This isn't just like a quick reaction kind of guy. Yeah. It's not like Antonio Brown or somebody who reacts yeah. off the cuff. You're talking about a very distinguished man. Yeah. So you had to go at the jugular of somebody else. Yeah, that's why I also that think. he cares about. Yeah. So even that, they would have had to say something discriminatory saying, to, to, to me. That's what I'm saying towards you. I'm saying if if they were to line that up and to then make it where it was about you, right? Then that would have been my biggest trigger. I would have. But also, I want to go back to the fact that you just said what my family needed. Well, I thought my family needed. I guess you say that. Right. What you thought your family needed. Yes. And I think that that's also a humongous distinction. hmm And a clouded representation. Okay, so look at Will and Jada yet again. Did she need protection in that moment? Well, or did Will just think that she needed protection I think Will, in that moment? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, and did he think that protecting her in that moment would actually heal parts of their marriage? And you guys, I don't know them personally. No, I don't know. You don't know them personally. But I'm yeah. walking through what Stephen and I, yeah, may or, like what we've been through. Yeah, and what we've been through is more so the assumption that the other person needs, needs something, something versus actually asking, "What do you need?" Yeah. What I need in this world is quality time. Yes. I need my kids to have a roof over their head. I need them to be fed. Like need. Need. Happiness for me is my dog, my kids, my husband, time in my house. That's what I need. Need, yeah. What I don't need is my husband to have immense compensation and not be with me and be on the football field. Yeah. I don't need my husband to have accolades and be at a big five whatever. Power five. Yeah, whatever it's called. <laughs> yes. Big 12. I was thinking big 12 and then power yeah. five. Yeah. So... But would I have been thrilled for you if that was the path that was right for us? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Would I have found my quality time? Yeah. Yeah. I would have figured it out. We would have figured it out. We would have figured it out. But I think that that's, that's also a different mindset. Mm-hmm. What you think that I need Yeah. and what I actually need are two different things. And I think that's where Will fell victim. No, I agree with that. And that's something that I've, I've, I've never thought about it from that angle is that what did Jada need in that moment versus what Will thought that he she needed. Right. Um, yeah. Because now her name is also being slashed across tabloids. Yeah. Correlating to them. And even stuff, old things from their marriage that maybe used to be under the bridge and under the, you know, all that all is that, now coming all back up. just digging into So it. you've literally just... You just lit a flame. Lit a flame. And it's running. Yeah. But like, what did she actually need in that? And that's a, and it's a very thoughtful question and a thoughtful nugget to leave with our listeners is that when you look at your relationships and your friendships, it's, it's about having the meaningful conversation. It's about seeing what they actually need and not just what you think they need. Also, so, so critical to think through maybe that maybe that scenario would be a good benchmark what was your first thought after that happened was it slashing chris rock was it slashing will or was it actually thinking what's going on in their lives yeah and i also think that racism for us plays a huge part in that because so many times our kids have gotten slandered or steven's gotten slandered or i've gotten slandered because i'm married to a black man i have biracial kids but more times than not our instinct is I wonder what happened to them. Yeah. To make them feel that way. Yeah. And so I would, it would be interesting to hear some of our listeners what their instinctional thought was. Was it about the human or was it just turning these people that are actors and actresses into a product like they've done with the football player? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a little heavy. A little heavy. Well, we love you guys. 
So if you guys are enjoying this, definitely leave us a review. Give us the feedback. If there's something you guys want us to talk about, reach out to us on our website at themizelshow.com. There is a contact section. You can put it in there. We would love to hear about it. Or you can always go over to Instagram at the Mizell Show. Also, as always, don't forget to screenshot this episode and just add it to your stories and tag us on Instagram, on Facebook at the Mizell Show. Thanks, guys. Are you loving the Mizell Show? Well, we love you all. And did you know that you can have me and Steven? Talk to your team or a group of 25 of your friends. All it takes is 25 people showing up on either a Zoom call, a Facebook Live, or really anywhere, hopefully in person sooner rather than later. But how do you get us? So all you have to do is email themizelshow at gmail.com or you can direct message us on Instagram at themizelshow.com.